Audio check. Everything's good. Weather check. Trader check. Good. How'd you guys do today, man? What a crazy market we're in, huh? Hope none of you guys are long any of these Wall Street bet stocks, Reddit stocks. I've been tweeting about them for, man, all day yesterday. Keep telling everybody, be careful, be careful. The end is coming, the end is coming. If you lost, that's okay. You learn from it. That's all you can do, guys. SNDL, <laughs> I oh man, these guys. I post all this stuff. They call. They started trolling me. It's pretty ridiculous, dude. Today, not a single worked. Many of those guys. They're probably gonna blame me because I shorted it. How'd you guys do, man? Same stuff every day, guys. At MIC, it's the same, same thing. Every day, to me, it's the same. To some days, got more plays than others, but I don't see any difference between today, the other day. There might be a couple of days that's different, but this is trading, man. I've been trading for 20 years, and this is the same boring shit. To me, you know, you know what I think about? It's pretty damn boring, guys. <laughs> I do stuff to, you know, make my, my life more exciting when I trade, like helping others and helping the room and stuff, but... Imagine doing the same process for 20 years, same thing over and over, man. It's, you know, the money doesn't really matter. It's the it's the excitement of nailing the trade. You saw all my charts. Go to Twitter today, guys. Holy crap. I top ticked pretty much every single stock. It's crazy. Process works. The lines work. I don't know why not everybody's in MIC learning this stuff. I mean, I put my fantasy orders out there. Fucking killed MBRX. I mean, every stock, man. GME shorted it at 157 at the very top. AMC shorted at $10 at the very top. Sick, right, guys? Every single chart I posted on Twitter was a fucking top tick short. Process, man. Done within the first 15 minutes. MPRX was a super opportunity. That's why I loaded that stock up short. Guys, the first step is to educate yourself. It's like when you want to become a doctor. You don't go, how much does, how much does a, a, a knife cost? How much does a surgery cost? The first step is to educate yourself. Go to school. Learn how to become a doctor. Learn how to become a day trader. And then when you're learning, that's when you start saving. You'd be surprised how much little money you need to start, guys. What you need to do is save your money so that you can educate yourself first. These guys are, man, they made millions on this game stock, but they don't make it unless you take the money out. But you do not take the money out. Doesn't It's meaningless. These guys went from up millions to fucking down everything they own. If they bought options, they're fucked. Options, they have no clue. They think people buy options, it's, it's super levered, right? It's super leveraged out. Under one, and so you can double your money, triple your money, quadruple your money really quickly. But think about this: if you can make money quickly, you can lose even more quickly. The institutions do not give you something in your benefit. Everything they sell into you guys is an instrument. Options are a financial instrument. It's to their advantage. When you're buying an option, you think it's cheap. It's not cheap. You're paying a huge premium to hold that option. You know, you can't afford the stock, so you trade the option. But if you do not know what you're doing, and you think that a, an option is a stock, and you keep holding it, even if the stock never even goes down, even if the stock goes up, the time premium decay will kill you. And you're like, shit, the stock went up. Why the fuck did I lost all my money? You know, because you're not under, you're not educated as to the financial instruments on which you're buying. The options have a time bomb in it. 
you are losing money every single day. They call that the premium. It's time decay, guys. Okay? So this is what we teach at MIC too. The guys at MIC, they got a bunch of great option traders that understand all this stuff. And we have a dedicated room, guys, for you to learn how to trade options properly. Making money is one thing. Keeping the money, I feel so bad for some of these guys. I mean, these they, these are like life fucking changing money. They, they might not care right now, but, but fuck, man, I guarantee you, next month when they're like, fuck, I, I wanna go fucking buy this something, and they're, you know, they're like, dude, I was up millions of dollars, now I'm bankrupt. Uh, as respect for the Wall Street guys, there'll be no backside of the move <laughs> today for my butt. I just want to really educate you guys on how to keep this fucking money, guys. Fucking crazy. You guys are fucking pumping Lizzie. That means that you're stuck long chasing. You guys are coming here to ask about... Learn how to trade, guys. So the first step. I uh, appreciate, first of all, you guys coming here to listen. You know, take the time out of your day. Um, so let's talk about this. Let's jump right into this. We, we have anything to start? Alex? So MIC is MIC. The same old thing. We do the same old thing every day, guys. You know, Alex was up like half a million bucks. You know, he gave back a little bit today trying to be aggressive on the long side. And it didn't pay off. It's fine. Lost back very small. 5% of what he made. So it's completely fine. He's not revenge trading. You know, he's, he took his loss. He didn't fucking keep adding the loser like some people. And that's what we teach at MIC. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You know, that was his plan. He's okay with it. Because he created the plan and he stuck with the plan. And then the problem with some of these guys, they're like, oh, I don't understand, man. I think this Twitter, this, this new Twitter thing, it's like, who can be down the most money and make it back? And for some reason, that is, that is like a badge of honor. I, I, just, I just find that perplexing, man. I hate, I would hate to be down that much and then have to come back. It's a fucking worst feeling in the world to be down. I'd rather not be down. I'd rather have proper risk management. I'd rather cut my losses and come back. These are the things that we teach our members, guys. You know? We may have enough money to bounce back from half a million, a million, $100,000 loss. But most members do not have that much money. They will follow us into the abyss. And so you have to, if you, if you are an educator, you, I mean, dude, it took me a long time to become an educator because the way, what I do, I, I just trade for myself and I make money and at the end of the day, it's how I make my fucking money. Don't fucking follow me. But as an educator, it's my responsibility because people are looking up to me. You know, people are looking up to me. It's like Donald Trump. I don't want to bash Donald Trump, but I'm just saying like, you know, as a leader, it's his responsibility to act properly. You can't be telling people to storm the Capitol and then now that they're in jail for 20 years. So you got that QA non guy, the shaman guy. Now he turned, he's testifying against Trump in the in, in the impeachment. He's like, I thought Trump was gonna bail me out. You know? And so as a leader, you have to be responsible for the people that you are the helping. You know, you can't say, hey, I don't give a fuck. I'm down. I'm gonna keep fucking adding. This is a small loss for me. I'm so confident. I'm gonna keep adding. You know what, man? The problem is you have a lot of money in your account. The members do not. They are going to get a margin call real quick from their broker. They're going to get an auto liquidation. They're not allowed to hold shit like this. <clears throat> they don't have nobody to add. And they will be emotional. They will sell at the bottom or that cover at the top. You know, you can't assume that they are good traders such as yourself. You, that's why they're paying you. They're paying you to learn. And so teach them the correct way. Okay? People think I'm bashing these people. I'm not bashing anybody. I am telling the world the correct way to fucking trade, dude. You know, <laughs> it's not good to have 50% drawdowns, 25% drawdowns of your entire account. And brag about how it's awesome. <laughs> you know? I, I'm not hating on anybody. They're going to keep talking about, bow, I don't make money. I don't give a fuck. But it's just crazy. I'm here to educate you guys, right? I'm not here to brag. I mean, dude, you want, you want to have a trading challenge? I, 
I will gladly do it. Put up a, the same amount of account. I would gladly do it. We'll fucking see. <laughs> yeah. But the better way, if you want to brag, the better way is to compare members. Why is it that MIC guys are the most consistent? The ones that go from not knowing much, an actual member learning, right guys? Learning to become consistent. We are the ones that are building traders from scratch. There are rooms specialized for experienced traders. Fine, go there. But if you want to learn how to trade properly from scratch, when you do not know much and have a community support around you, MIC is the way to do it. We are not gunslingers, guys. You know, we're not here to fucking make the most money every fucking day. That's not my goal. My goal is not to make the most money. My goal is to make consistent gains with low stress, low risk. And here I am walking around. You see me? Alex and I are doing live. We're walking around, enjoy our fucking life. Done within 10 minutes. Take a look at my charts. And that's why I post the charts. I don't give a fuck about the PL. Look at the fucking charts. <laughs> you can post million dollar PL, but your charts look like shit. You know? And that's the point. The point is, I'm teaching you a process. And then you can apply my process, MIC's process, our process, to your own bankroll. You, you can fucking apply it to your own bankroll, dude. It's like, <laughs> I'll give you an example. You go to the fucking club. All your fr this guy, this guy, is keep bragging it. He's laying all these girls, but but he's fucking giving them roofies and shit, right? <laughs> you know, that's the that's sort of fucking mentality. I'd rather just go through my process. If, if today I don't get laid, I don't get laid at the club. It's cool. I'm just giving you like that as an example. I'm just, no, don't, don't kill me by the example. But my point being is, man, it's not the result that matter, guys. It's the process. It's the fucking process. Results are meaningless because if it's a one-off thing, it's not repeatable. Our shit is repeatable. Our shit is so repeatable that members have the same charts as we do without us having to even get on the microphone to promote it, to pump it. We do not pump. We do not alert. But yet somehow our members have the same fucking entries and exits. That's fucking the best feeling in the fucking world as an educator when you do not have to handhold someone and then they become successful. Right, guys? That is the goal of every day trader. The goal of every day trader is not to, is not to be able to fucking be the quickest guy chasing, being sheep. You are going to see in 2021 when shit changes, when things are not fucking obviously crazy anymore, like, like 2021 when everything was just a bye, 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 bye. You, 2021 taught a lot of people bad, bad fucking habits. And they are going to go broke this year. Take a look at GME GameStop, AMC. They are starting to go bankrupt already. This is only fucking the second month. They had a false sense that they know what they're doing. It's not how much you make, guys. It's how much you put in your fucking pocket at the end of the day. On paper is meaningless. Okay? You do not want to fucking... Hold a $20 million win. I feel so bad for some of these guys. They have fucking $20 million, $10 million, $1 million. And today it evaporated. They might be down. Most of these guys are down right now. There's no way anybody who held diamond hands this week is up. I tweeted on Twitter. Diamond hands. Be careful. Diamond hands will turn into empty pockets. I don't have fucking diamond hands. I don't want diamond hands. I'm not fucking here to hold this shit to make a statement. I'm here to fucking trade to make money. I'm here to teach you guys to make fucking money. To fucking help your family. To feed yourself. Fucking make... The guys that are telling you to hold this to send a message. <laughs> what the fuck? So, you're going to go fucking broke. You're going to have a legion of broke army. Reddit broke army. Or you rather have Reddit educated smart army that is going to change the fucking world. Being broke does not help the cause. Learning to trade, learning the system, learning to become a suit, learning to understand what the suit is doing. That's how you fucking break the system. And they did that. They broke the fucking system, but but they're they're missing one capacity. 
They do not understand that stocks are not like Bitcoin. You, um, stocks, they can put out an offering anytime, like SNDL. These guys were fucking buying $1.7 billion. I mean, shares, I'm sorry, more than that. Yeah, more, more than $1.7 billion of SNDL yesterday. Why is the stock not going up? Because on the other side, some guy's selling $300 million worth of worthless paper to them. It's a worthless fucking company. These companies can dilute and finance themselves any way, any time they want. So, it's so simple. I'm telling you right now, man. You think they need a filing to short? They'll just fucking shorten on the fucking open market. And then they'll cover back on the back end with an offering. You guys don't understand how this game works, man. These guys control the institution. They are using you to pump a dump. You think you're fucking Wall Street with GME GameStop? You only fucked one hedge fund. But that hedge fund has an army itself. You see fucking... Uh, you see Citadel come in? You see Steve Cohen come in and help him out? They're all friends, dude. And then when you're pumping silver, silver the next fucking play? Citadel owns 5% of fucking silver. The whole SLV. They're the, I think they're the fifth largest holder or some shit. They hold huge. Whatever the percentage they hold, I think I, I tweeted this. So you're helping the institution. You're not squeezing anybody. And notice what happened now, guys. Robin Hood. Robinhood has now financed itself and allow you to start buying again these stocks that tanked. And look what happened today. They let you buy so that they can short the fuck out of you. Jesus, guys. Now you guys understand, there is no fucking... You're not killing the system. The, ki the system is killing you. They're using you. All of a sudden, Robinhood says you can buy fucking all these shares you want. And what happened today? Everything fucking tanks. Because they want you to buy the shit that they're fucking shorting. The shit that they're selling to you. This is not a bunch of retail guys taking the stock. Actually, it is. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry. This is the retail guys getting panicked out. They're getting margin called out or whatever the hell it may be. That's what I meant. Think about why all of a sudden they let you fucking buy as much shares as you want of these stocks. It, they let you for a reason. They stopped letting you buy it and it crashed. That's when you had the advantage. And they killed the advantage because they own the infrastructure. They're all fucking friends, guys. We are friends with a bunch of broke-ass motherfuckers who became rich for one week. Now they're broke again. And I keep telling everybody, before even moves, remember I keep telling you, you only need to get rich once. You only need to get rich once. When you're fucking rich, lock that shit up. The guys are up 20 million. They should at least lock some up. I don't even know they're up anymore. What they did correctly though, they didn't add on the way down. If you added on the way down, you are smoked. If you had a hundred share, dollar share average, and then you saw that shit go up to 500 bucks, and you're like, oh please drop to $200. I would go all in. That's how greed happens. You're like, fuck, I should have went all in. I should have went all in. Then it keep going up. And then you're like, I'm waiting. I hope it drops. So everybody out there is hoping GameStop drops. Hoping AMC drops. Because they are now ready. They fucking borrowed all their money from their family and friends to wait for this dip. And when the dip came, they got murdered. This is how the game works, guys. AMC came out with a $1 price target yesterday. One dollar price target. You know what that fucking means? It means all their fucking hedge fund motherfuckers are going to hammer this motherfucker down to five bucks. It's not going to hit dollar because they're going to cover all the way down. But they're not going to, you know, they put a dollar so that they can fucking cover at five bucks. These, these, these games you guys are playing, you guys are playing fucking peewee leagues. And these guys are in the fucking NFL with the best fucking team money can buy. And if they lose, they they are the commissioner of the NFL. They will change the rules. All of a sudden, you're like, wait, I thought it's fourth down. You're supposed to punt. Oh, no, no. We, we made this new rule that now this guy has five downs. And we made the field goal much bigger so that he can kick the fucking ball in the field goal. You don't understand. They, they fucking, and they go, they go, oh, you're going to sue me? 
Did you read your fucking contract? When you joined fucking Robin Hood, did you read the fucking fine print? Did you read that 25 page in fucking two font, little Tahoma two font, you know, size? You're fucked, you can't sue them. They have a fucking contract in there that you signed. They said, we can fuck you anytime you want. And we'll continue to fuck you. Do you agree? Sign here, you signed. You're fucked. In there it says you can't sue them. In there it says they can change anything to, to save the company. So they're using the excuse of liquidity or not liquidity. Pick one. But they 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 basically got fucked and they changed the rules. They did not change the rules, guys. They changed they basically let you be aware of the of the rule. You are now aware of how they can do this. I've seen this happen all the time. They stop trading. This is called a halt. When shorts get fucked, they call the SEC friends and do a fucking halt. And so these stocks, a lot of these stocks run up to $100 from like a dollar. Next thing they get halted for more information. And then you wake up, fucking you went from 100 bucks down to $2. They own the fucking system. They own the game. They are the commissioner of the NFL. You just, I'm, my goal is to become a fucking franchise owner of the NFL. That's it. I'm not going to fucking be the guy writing the rules. I'm just going to be a little guy happy to fucking be owning a franchise. Or being allowed in this stadium. I'm okay with front court side seats and front row tickets, right? So how does this help you guys? This taught you guys a valuable lesson in life. Number one. Money don't mean shit unless it's in your fucking pocket. You can't, you just, you just woke up. And a lot of, the problem is a lot of people do not understand that a stock can go from $500 to $100 like that. And the next day, next week, it's going to be under 100 bucks. It's going to be fucking, by next month, it's going to be forgotten. It's going to go right back to 30, 40 bucks. People do not understand that. People go, how, how could that possibly happen? First of all, the stock, GameStop, AMC, is a worthless company. It's a worthless company. There are no fundamentals behind it. Those companies were about to go bankrupt. The pandemic made them bankrupt. When's the next time you're going to go to an AMC movie theater? Why the fuck are you... Take a look at the chart of AMC. AMC. They ran up to a price point before the pandemic happened. Even if you fucking invested, you're like, I'm a long-term investor in AMC. When's the next time AMC movie theater is going to come open? When's the next time at GameStop, you're going to go into GameStop and, and, and fucking trade out your fucking video consoles? It's all done electronically now. These, there's a reason why these companies are being shorted down. You, 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 they did a fantastic job of short squeezing, but these short squeezes never, never, ever keep going up forever. It gets to the point where everybody dies and then that's how the top happens. I keep telling people all the time, the top happens on a short squeeze when the major guy that holds the most share gets squeezed and covered. When Melvin covered, when you saw Melvin Capital go bankrupt, they covered. They covered. That was the fucking top. The moment they fucking covered, down, 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 every fucking day. And these guys are buying today at $200, $150, whatever. They're like, oh, it's so cheap. But then they did not expand their ch their time frame out. Look at the fucking time frame. These fucking banks have a longer time frame than you. I keep telling you, the markets can remain and will remain irrational longer than you can stay solvent how do you make money now in this market guys education now you just got a big dose of fucking education i've seen guys going from fucking up big to down big to near bankruptcy same thing for hedge fund guys so suits have learned how to stop this bleeding think about this guys these suits have been in the game for hundreds of years they they pretty much figured out the loopholes and all the shit. And so now Wall Street Bets uncovered a major loophole. And they took advantage of that loophole. You don't think these guys are smart? They lost money? Now they're going to plug the loophole up. They're going to plug that fucking loophole up. Meanwhile, you guys are sitting on the fucking sidelines holding your fucking nuts. Praying this shit goes and keep calling yourself diamond hands. Your fucking diamond hands is going to be fucking cubic zirconia hands soon. Worthless. Learn, guys. Learn. They want you to be diamond hands. 
as a day trader, I love this action. I love this action. Okay? So, if you are if you are, so how do you take advantage, dude? If you are a long bias trader, meaning you're betting the stock goes up, you trade on the front side, what we call the front side. You know what the front side is? Join MIC, we'll teach you. But point is, there are times of a stock play that is advantageous to long. And there's other times advantageous to short. GME, I did not even short one share until this week on the back side of the move. I shorted it 150 points from the top. I think it was 277 bucks, whatever. It was a, I short, I did not try to cherry pick the top. I let the top form, let it tank, make sure that this shit was dead. Then I shorted it. We call that a lot of meat. There's a lot of meat on the bone left, guys. I don't need to eat the whole fucking steak and throw up. I'll eat the fucking juiciest part of the steak. Give the fucking fat and all the crap I don't want to someone else. And let the diamond hands chew on the worthless bones. Okay, guys? How you make money. Once again, it's not too late to make money. A lot of times, the secret is not to touch the main stock. I'll give you an example. You go to a club. You do not hit on the best looking chick. I, the best looking chick always has a bunch of other girlfriends with them. You just be friends with the hot chick. And then the other chicks will fall in line. Same thing with GameStop. That's why we use this analogy. It's kind of sexist, but I apologize. But this is, you know. So GameStop, I don't, you don't touch GameStop. You touch the other stocks. It's much easier to trade the other stocks. All the pros are trading GameStop. All the pros are trying to hit on the hottest chick at the club. Here we, here I come in with my little fucking, you know, <laughs> Cheetos bottle service. And some guy comes in with a big old 1942. And he thinks 1942 is a shit. And then another guy comes in with a Dom Perignon. You know, and another guy pulls up on, the, on a fucking yacht. And then all of a sudden, the owner comes out. You know, like, you, know, you don't fuck those kind of, you don't, you don't compete in that department, right? So that's why we have a concept called the sympathy play. The side chicks. Or it could be a side guy. You can sell whatever you want. The point is this. There are, these are the tactics if you want to trade and make money. It's not cool. You know, people always say, hey, did you get trade GameStop? No, but I made a shit little more money from another stock without any risk. You know, the guys that are getting, that are getting fucking, that talk about GameStop are the fucking guys that are amateurs. The professionals use GameStop as a, as as a fucking guide, as an index, okay? GameStop goes up, other sympathy plays go up. GameStop dies, all the other play dies. And it's a more safe bet to trade the other, to, to short the other stocks because the other stocks went up with no merit, only went up because of a sympathy from GME, GameStop. All right, guys? And look at what happened today. Look what happened today, GameStop died, our old small cap market is back. I'm like, holy shit, I have normal plays now. Not just plays based upon Wall Street bets. How am I able to go back to my rhythm? I talked to every fucking stock today, guys. Take a look at Twitter. Every fucking stock. The process works, guys. The process works. This is what we teach. And in a way, I'm glad this shit's over. I can go back to my boring ass daily routine. No more excitement. The excitement is what kills you. I'd rather be rich and bored as fuck at work than to be exciting and risk my livelihood. Once again, how would you make money on this? You make money because now you've been exposed to the harsh reality of how trading is. This is a wake up call for all the kids in the fucking basement of their house with, with, and never had a real job in their life. The moment they get a real job, they realize how hard it is to make a dollar. Working minimum wage all fucking day, slaving to make 100 bucks. And then the government comes and takes fucking half of that shit for taxes. Now you're left with 50 bucks. You're like, holy fuck. Life is hard. It's the earlier you get the dose of reality, the less money you lose, guys. So, all these kids trading games off. Don't look at that as a loss. It's either you win or you learn. 
Those that don't learn, go broke. So learn, guys. The fact that you're here means you want to learn. you just seen the craziness of the market. This is how I became successful. I got scammed. When I first started trading penny stocks, I got scammed. I saw the fucking PR come out, press release. I believe it cured cancer. Holy fuck, this 20, 20 cent stock is curing cancer. It's only $20. If this shit goes to 100 bucks, I am a billionaire. Diamond hands, motherfucker. And then next you know that 20 cent stock went down and down and down. And next you know I'm fucking owning, I have to fucking file a 4-4 because I own a percentage of the company. You know, I have people scam me left and right. And I got educated real quick, guys. I got educated real fucking quick. That's why every stock to me is a scam. I treat every stock as a scam. I'm here just to nail and bail. Bang the fuck out of that shit and leave. You know? Though, I mean, fuck, dude. If you want to fucking have a steady relationship in stocks, bang the fucking wild bitches. The stocks, not the bitches, wild stocks. And then you invest in fucking real companies like Amazon. You know, companies like Amazon, Google. Those are the fucking boring ass bitches. But then you look at the boring ass bitches, you're like, holy shit. The past year, the boring bitches is like keep consistently going up. All right, guys. Any questions? I'm going to bring one guy on. It's been a while since I bring anybody on. Does anybody want to come on? Otherwise, we'll, we'll end it here. Education, guys. Take a look at the Twitter today. I posted back back in action, man. We're back. You know, I love this now. I love all this shit ending because you know what, man? To be honest, everyone's attention went on to GME and AMC. Now it looks hella easy in hindsight, but at the time it was not easy. And so you lose a lot of opportunity costs. So by trading these fucking stocks, I could have traded like all these other easier plays. You know, so so a lot of times it's opportunity cost, guys, but it's fun. I, I, I mean, but for me, I knew that, hey, man, even if I don't make money, it's fucking fun. And so I've already, I've already a lot of that. But then when I think about it, it's kind of stupid. I'm here to make money. I'm not here to just fucking have fun. If I want to have fucking fun, I can have fun after hours, right? So people that say they want to have fun, bullshit. There's many ways to have fun, but when you're fucking up a million bucks, when you're up a fucking hundred thousand dollars, when you're up ten thousand dollars, and then you lose it, it's no fun, guys. All right, guys, we'll see you back in the fucking room, guys. This is a big ass wake up lesson for everybody. Back to business. Learn, guys. This is not too late. A lot of the people are still gaining two stocks right now. They are wanting the next big play. Let's fucking take advantage of this volume. Take advantage of all this because now you are educated. You know when to buy, when to sell, and not get duped into believing Diamond Hands is going to make you rich. Diamond Hands made a handful of guys, early guys rich. The rest of these Diamond Hand motherfuckers are now fucking armless. No fucking legs left. They're about to fucking pawn their legs. They're fucking walking on their asshole right now. All right, guys. We'll see.